listen, I suppose it's a good day for the club and that there's more clarity, but how does this change the landscape for them? What does it actually mean? And does it mean they're going to become bigger spenders in this window? Morning, Sam. Yeah, I think it does, actually. It's First of all, it's nice to get that clarity because it's been a long time coming, this takeover. And uh, to finally get that over the line is good news for the club. And it means now the club can start moving forwards. In terms of your question about spending, I'm not sure we'll be big spenders um, in the sort of coming window. I think what the club want to do is retain a core of players who, you know, impressed in the Premier League, but perhaps didn't get the the chance to keep the club in the top flight. But now it's about retaining those players and then perhaps adding two or three or four to that mix to replace the seven or eight who've already left. So there's a lot of optimism going forward. And and I think Leeds fans can, can look forward to what will be a decent window, but hopefully, you know, a solid promotion push. James, retaining those players is going to be easier said than done, isn't it? Because I'm reliably informed a lot of Leeds players have uh, release clauses built into their contracts following relegation. We've seen it with Rodrigo already and his budget move to Qatar. He's been by no means the only departure. I'm told that Jack Harrison has a clause in his contract that would allow him to go out on loan for the season to a Premier League club for a minimal fee. So it's unlikely he's going to stay beyond the end of the window, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what Jack will end up doing. Obviously, you mentioned that clause in his contract that was built into the deal he signed back in sort of February after the Leicester move broke down. So there's a chance he could leave. But the 49ers, they've they've set about a core group of players who they want to keep. Um, And there's an advantage in some of these deals in that Wilfred Nonto, first and foremost, there's no relegation release clause in his deal um, obviously, when they signed him from Zurich last summer, he was a cut price deal and no one quite knew the impact he would have. Thankfully, there's no relegation release clause in that deal. Um, the club previously incentivized these players coming to Leeds by offering the sort of get out clause should the club go down, which is what happened. But with Nonto, that was never in place. And it's the same actually for Tyler Adams, who's a, another player they they desperately want to keep. He There's no relegation release clause in his deal either. Um, Leeds do have a sort of price in mind. Uh, They bought him for £20 and they value him at around the £35 to £40 million mark. So there's no urgency to sell him, uh, given the fact that quite a few others have already left. And uh, Max Verber is another one they want to keep. And there's talk today of uh, Luis Sinestera also hanging around. So if they can keep those four, there's a good core of players which you know, the club will hope can push them towards the upper echelons of the championship. Yeah, how confident are you about that? Ethan Ampadu looks like he's going to sign for around about £7 million from Chelsea. Is that the type of signing that will see Daniel Farker return the club at the first attempt to the top flight? And what have you made of his appointment? Because he is someone who has got teams out of the championship before. Yeah, I think Farker is a really good appointment. He's solid. He he knows the, the league inside out. Two promotions in in the last five seasons or two championship wins in the last five seasons show that he's a man who has good knowledge of the championship and and likes to play football in a nice, positive way. And I don't want to compare him to Bielsa. That would be wholly unfair. But the type of football he has played has certainly been attractive and pleasing on the eye. And and Leeds fans should like the product he, he will put on the field. And I think he's made some really good noises in the sense that He's not made it clear he's going to go for promotion. He's made it clear that his first goal is to unite the club and get the fans back on back on board and and get the club sort of pulling in the same direction. And you really sort of think if he gets that bit right, the rest should follow, particularly with the players that are around. And to answer your question about Ampadu, I think that's that's a really smart signing. He's uh, he's not had the best record in that. He's suffered. Three, promo- uh, three relegations with three different teams in the last three years. However, I think he's a player with a point to prove. And 44 caps for Wales, he's, he's always shown what he's about. He's got versatility, he can play central defence, he can play uh, as a sort of holding midfielder too. And I, th- I believe that's where Farker will try to utilise him, a replacement for Mark Rocker and hopefully someone who can partner Tyler Adams in the midfield. It's interesting they've settled on Daniel Farker, probably for the reasons that Sam has articulated, but we know that Patrick Vieira had long-standing admirers on the Leeds board. Ralph Hasenhutl was a name that was mentioned to me briefly as well. The fact it is Farker, is that a pretty clear indication that Stuart Webber at some point will be following him from Norwich as sporting director? 
Yes, quite possibly. And I know Leeds have, have had talks with Stuart Weber and he's, he's a man they have identified. Um, quite how that will work, I'm not too sure because they've got uh, Nick Hammond in a, in a, in a temporary uh role as the sort of overseeing the transfers for this window and then there is the uh, gentleman from Spurs uh, due to come in Greta Steinson um, he'll be appointed in a technical director role um, so it remains to be seen how all the pieces will fit together but you would think Farker and given his relationship with Weber that could be something that comes about. Um Lead Supporters Trust has confirmed that its application to make Ellen Road an asset of community value has been approved today and listed by Leeds City Council. That's happened in the last couple of hours or so. Just explain what that means as far as Ellen Road is concerned. Well, Ellen Road's always been a bit of a a chess piece, if you like, in the ownership of Leeds United. Uh, Rod Rizani very quickly uh, took control of that when he bought the club in 2017. Um, and that was an important acquisition, uh, given that over the years it's been owned in the past by Leeds City Council. There's been, uh, in the past, there's been uh, times where overseas investors have, have owned the rights to Ellen Road. So it's really important, a fundamental piece, if you like, for the ownership of Leeds United and, and those in sort of in charge of the club that we know who owns Ellen Road. And the fact that the supporters' trust has made that clear and they want to know where the ownership of Leeds, uh, of where Ellen Road is, it is like an important part in that in that place, really. So it's good to get that clarification. And, and you know, it's a big part of what Leeds United is. Ellen Road is obviously the home of Leeds, um, comes with a lot of history. And to get that clarification is important. Thank you very much, James. Appreciate you coming on and clarifying that. Leeds taken over and looking to return to the Premier League at the first attempt. 